Hello marine biology students. In this video we're going to learn what marine biology is and a bit about why observation is so important for sciences. So in our first week of this course we are going to be looking at the first two chapters of our textbook and really highlighting these major points. First, an introduction to marine biology and the reason for studying marine biology in the first place. A bit about modern marine biology and an emphasis on, on observation and ocean observation techniques. And then in our next video, we will highlight the oceans of the world and also this concept of plate tectonics and how it relates to ocean basins. So marine biology, what is it? Well, marine biology is the study of organisms that live in the sea. This would include all bodies of water that have some degree of salinity in them, even including estuaries. At river mouths. Now, marine biology is not a separate science. What I mean by that is it is an applied field of biology and incorporates many other sciences into it, such as geology, many aspects of chemistry, from organic to inorganic and even biochemistry, physics, meteorology, or the study of weather and weather systems and wind and wind formation, and also zoology and botany. So really, marine biology is just biology of organisms that live in the oceans, in the seas of the world. Marine biologists study organisms that inhabit the sea. Now, there's a related but slightly different field known as oceanography. Someone who studies oceanography, oceanographers, they mainly study the physical or non-living aspects of the oceans. This includes tides, currents, waves, and the chemical makeup of seawater. So with that said, there's an aspect of oceanography known as biological oceanography. And this differs slightly from marine biology in that a biological oceanographer will be looking at global scale processes, such as the carbon cycle or nitrogen cycle of the planet and how marine organisms are impacting uh, these cycles on a global scale. Also, what aspects from the rest of the world impact marine organism growth and development and blooming. And so we'll talk a bit about this later, but. Biological oceanography is not the emphasis of this course. This is a marine biology course, so we're primarily going to be spending time talking about the diversity of animals within the oceans and also how they relate and interact with each other in marine ecosystems and habitats. Now, why should we study marine biology in the first place? Why are you taking this course? Well, since life is believed to have arisen in the sea, Studying marine life can help provide clues about early life on Earth. Additionally, many products that we use come directly from the sea, including food and medicines de derived from marine species and also other items, whether it's in manufacturing uh, or a variety of others. Marine organisms, the primary producers, they produce oxygen. And this oxygen is used globally by all sorts of organisms, including us as humans. Yes, there is photosynthesis that takes place on land, but since most of the surface of our planet is covered with water, it turns out that photosynthetic marine species contribute a significant portion of the oxygen in our atmosphere. Next, the marine environment provides recreation. and supports tourism worldwide. And lastly, oceans play a significant role in helping to regulate climate. 
Because of the high specific heat of water, water is very slow to change in temperature, and this helps keep coastal land masses more stable year-round. So these are some of the reasons why we study marine biology in the first place. Now, a brief mention of modern marine biology and also just some of the difficulties when it comes to marine biology. The scientific method is the way that all science is performed, and it is a systematic way of testing ideas. Now, at the heart of this method is the need to observe nature. And this is one of the biggest challenges of marine biology. However, it's also one of the areas of active modern development. In order for marine biology to take place, there needs to be an area where it can take place. Much of marine biology happens aboard marine research vessels, but there are also marine biology research stations. that exist in locations around the world. There are several research facilities in the United States that are considered among the most famous. These include Woods Hole, Oceanographic Institute and Marine Laboratory in Massachusetts, Scripps Institution, in La Jolla, California, and Friday Harbor Laboratories in Washington State. Now, since we know the importance of observation in science, it turns out this is one of the more difficult aspects of marine biology because as humans, we are not able to directly observe most of the marine environments. Now, there have been improvements in technology and different techniques that have increased this observation over time, but it is still one of the primary difficulties of marine science. So some of the ways we have to make observations of the marine environment include remote sensing, which are satellites used to study large expanses of the surface of ocean, whether it's measuring the color of the surface of the ocean or the temperature or even the, the height of the surface of the ocean. This can give us information about marine environments. Sonar, which is using sound waves to map seafloor depths and formations on the seafloor. Scuba, which is actually an acronym for self-contained underwater breathing apparatus. And so scuba allows humans to study the marine environment for longer periods of time and at depths that otherwise would be unavailable to humans. There are also remotely operated vehicles or ROVs. which are submarines that are controlled on board a ship usually and, and not with a human in the submarine itself. That allows for direct exploration of marine environments when scuba is not an option, such as a significant depth or a significant length of time needed for the observation. And as I had said, research vessels. These are ships, really floating laboratories, equipped with all of the scientific machines and techniques and materials that oceanographers and marine biologists need 
in order to be able to explore marine environments for weeks, months, even years at a time without returning to land-based facilities. And this isn't all. There's active development of technology. And other equipment currently being used to study the marine environment and its habitats. And so to this, I would like to direct you to box 1.1 in our textbook, Observing the Ocean, where it will highlight these and many other forms of observation and monitoring that are currently allowing us to improve our ability to make observations and therefore improve our ability to perform science in a marine setting and make observations of the amazing animals that live within the oceans. So that's the end of this first video. In our next video, we're going to talk about ocean basins, plate tectonics, and ocean crust. Thanks for your attention. See you in the next video.